together something off the hop? Off the hop. What does that mean? Uh, it's like right off the bat, right, right at the start of whatever you're doing. Off the hop. Uh, so right like, off the hop. Right off the hop. We're going to introduce this episode, which is episode 13 of the House of Guests podcast. Good guess. I saw your face go, oh crap. Uh, numbers. Yeah. Alright, who's here? Uh, let's, tonight, let's introduce you guys. To you guys. <laughs> no, that, that's an internet box reference. Oh, oh I see. Oh, no, um, tell me about it. Tonight, hosted as always by myself, Ben, we have... Alex. Aaron. And Steven. And Ben. And myself. Uh, who hosts, as always. What, <laughs> what, what are you doing? <laughs> Something happened to me last night that I never thought I would see happen. I saw Steven <laughs> coming out of 7-Eleven, not carrying a Slurpee. Okay. He was carrying a four liter jug of milk. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I was working at the seven near Steven's house last night, and then all of a sudden I'm like mind numbingly boring trying to work and pull these stupid pegs off the wall. Yeah. And all of a sudden he just goes, Oh, hey, Alex, so this is where you're working at now. And I look up and I'm like, oh, Okay, cool, it's Steven. And he just knock out a slurp in his hand, he's got a jug of milk. Yeah. I'm like, Okay. He's like, Yeah, no, I started to get milk on my way home, and it's 11 o'clock now, so I got milk. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Two minute conversation, he was off. That's awesome. Never I, thought I'd see the day. I remember when Steven, you were working at the Safeway, and I was there getting some groceries, and I'm like, I'm looking at all the, in the cheese section, I'm looking at all the selected cheese, I pick one up, all of a sudden you're beside me, you're like, nice selection. <laughs> 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 like, what the hell? It, it was pretty sweet. I forgot you worked at that Safeway. Yeah. Courtesy clerk. Yeah. It was an alright gig. I remember going with Rudy, or hanging out with Rudy, and then trying to find you at Safeway a couple times, but we could never find you. I didn't work that often, I only worked pretty yeah. much once a week, so. Part-time. Yeah. But, yeah. that's where you got, got all your to, courtesy yeah. from. <laughs> got to make ends meet in grade nine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Slurpee fun. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So, you had something you wanted to talk about? Your 30-second conversation? Uh, no, well, no, usually we talk about stories or what happened during the week. Okay, you, I've got a story. See, I, I, was, I got another one. I got some beef sauce to spit right now. <laughs> okay, spit, spit your sauce. It's with you. Oh, is it? <laughs> oh, yeah. I heard this Dude, I, I'm getting right into this. Okay. You're a prick. <laughs> <laughs> the so, end. It's over. First, first off, with this stupid editing who's trying to upload everything for this last week episode. Yeah. Um, the characters for um, the tags <laughs> and whatnot, you sent me 750 characters. Our limit's like 250. Yeah. <laughs> it took me an hour and a half to get him down to an episode that I didn't even listen to yet to try and figure out tags to upload the video. Oh, uh, yeah. As well, you sent it to me in a column, not like as each individual ones, yeah. not in like a paragraph, like I sent it to Steven, that I'm sure you've seen how I sent them to Steven. Uh, I actually don't see, like all I see is just a bunch of text together, I don't actually. Oh, that's kind of the way it needs to be put in the exactly. <laughs> Okay. It was, fine. it was just the fact that it was in one column, I had to go and delete each indent and go and add a comma and delete each indent. Yeah. And then even then it was 750 characters. That's awesome. So I had to co cop out, crop out, whatever, a fifth of it. Basically. Way more or, than a fifth. Or no. You're cutting out, yeah, basically. I was going to say, yeah, you're cutting no, out more than 50%. English is hard. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, no. And then your color coding scheme, it didn't make any sense either. <laughs> yeah, it did. <laughs> no, green we talked about, orange is it. It's like, why? Why do we, Why can't you just say, we talk about these a lot, or don't put tags in? Like, Wazaduck? I don't know, the, color, the red color that Mitch... <laughs> oh, Wazaka! That one. Yeah, I, I don't have a clue what this is, and I didn't listen to the episode either. And it's like, just there. I'm like, I don't know what this means. So I deleted it. Then listen to the episode. I'm like, you talk about it for like two minutes. Like, there's no point in making the tag of it. Oh, I just wrote like as I was <laughs> editing it. I, oh yeah, no, I do the same thing, but I don't do it for every single freaking topic. You talk about it for two minutes. Eh, whatever. <laughs> the 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 <sighs> point of the tags to me is if somebody is like, oh, what was that episode where they talked about this, and they try to search that, then it shows up, right? See, I would agree, but we only get 255 characters. Yeah. Like, I, people, uh iTunes and other companies, they won't accept more than that. They just will reject the feed. What about YouTube? YouTube, you can. Well, yeah. then, there you go. Put them all <laughs> yeah, in you YouTube. Wanna... <laughs> <laughs> Still yeah. cost them an hour and a half of work. <laughs> sure, I, I honestly don't know what YouTube's limit is. Oh, okay. I, 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 I think YouTube would probably have some sort of limit. Yeah. Uh, mind you, there's some really long tag lists. I don't know. I, I'll try you it. You can... This will your original 750 character one. Or maybe people just put it in the... Some people just put in the description and just list yeah. 10,000 tags. Yeah, which, if we really care, we could do. Yeah. No, we don't. You look dumb if you do exactly. that. Exactly. 
Yeah. Anybody who does it on YouTube, screw off. Nobody likes you. <laughs> Your video wasn't that good to begin with. Okay, so to resolve this issue, I just have to learn how to do the files and stuff, and exactly. then exactly. As well, you gotta learn it for next week. So I'm not here anyway. Huh? So there we go. Done. I can do my own job. Yeah, finally, <laughs> learn how to do my own job. Um. So work this week. We're working at a house just on one of the like small man-made lakes in Calgary. Yeah. And um, same house. Same house, we've been there since October, we'll be there till May. Uh, there's a lot of snow here right now. Yep. And we started to notice like tracks in the snow around the house. We're like, oh, there's there's some sort of animal just walking around here. And we saw that there is a bobcat that is just prowling around this specific house because we've seen him on four different days just around the house, like you know, running along fences. And... You've seen the cat? Yeah. To the, un- to the uneducated, what's a bobcat? Because I'm imagining like a lynx. cougar. No. Okay. It's a lynx. Okay. Lynx and bobcat are the same a- thing. Apparently they're not the same it's thing. Same. It's like a puma and a cougar. The exact same thing. They look exactly the same. Okay. Because I was imagining an incredibly yeah. dangerous cat. I'm like, why are you there? <laughs> Please. Please. It's a bit bigger it than be, a house cat. Basically, it would be dangerous for an outdoor animals. small yeah. dog. Yeah. Okay. But it's not, you're not going to get eaten by mm-hmm. some giant and well, it depends on how big you are. <laughs> Baby. I, I, I could fight a bobcat. If, if a dingo could take a toddler, I think a bobcat could Dingo ate my bike, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 No, so this bobcat, it was, uh, it like, we kept looking out the windows while we were working just to see if we could catch a glimpse of him. And the second he showed up, we were all like, where's my phone? Where's my phone? Just to try to, like, get pictures or video of him or whatever. And uh, he went around the house and we're just, we're kind of looking for him. And me and my one coworker, we went to this one room, and we're like, oh, I wonder where he is. And we look outside, and he's sitting right in front of us. I'm like, oh, cool. So I got my phone out and recorded him, and he's just kind of sitting around, looking around. And then he sort of scampered off, so we ran to a different window to see where he went. He went across the neighbor's front step, down their driveway, and then got really low. And then his, his like, his shoulders dropped, his hind legs came up, and he started to stalk. I'm like, he's hunting right now. This is so cool. And then he just bounded down the driveway, pounced into the snow, and a mouse just flew out of the snow. No way. And the bobcat just, like, smacked it, played around with it, bit it a couple times. This mouse, it was just this, like, mini battle going on, (laughs) just playing with this mouse. And then, uh, finally he killed it, and then he just started chewing on it a little bit. And I got kind of a crappy video of, uh, of this thing chewing on the mouse. And it kept looking up and like looking around, I guess just looking for birds or whatever to come steal the kill. But as I like, I was so focused on my video that I didn't notice that my two coworkers were walking up the driveway with their phones. <laughs> <laughs> so the bobcat might have thought they were trying to come steal the mouse. That and is then so cool. They went and looked at the carcass of the mouse because the cat didn't finish it. It just left the ass, <laughs> which meant that. The bobcat literally gave a rat's ass to the birds, <laughs> which I thought that was funny. All right. It was it was an interesting time. Sounds like it. Any any wildlife like that in Calgary is always cool. Yeah, they're smart. Yeah. Well, as well, there's you're really lucky if you do see a bobcat like that in Calgary. Yeah. Because they're very rare and very stealthy. Yeah, stealthy and skittish. Yeah. Speaking of wildlife, this was a while ago. There was a moose across the street from where I lived. Oh, cool. Really? In, the pl- in the playground, yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> uh, it escaped from Nose Hill, got incredibly scared, and wandered all the way down close to my house, and it wandered pretty far into the city, and then uh, they eventually came and got rid of it into the city. Did. That's a pretty big distance to just go through yeah. the neighborhoods and stuff. It is. Mm-hmm. a big distance for a moose to get up to Nose Hill in the first place. Yeah. Like, as far as I know, there's no mooses on Nose Hill. There's a bunch of deer. But like a, for a moose to get on Nose Hill, it's a it's a good yeah. distance. I guess it's I like a I don't know where else it would have come from. Like I would assume yeah, it would have come from Nose Hill. You sure it was moose though? A hundred percent. Like yeah, like a <laughs> rack of antlers. Like this thing's a moose. Yeah, okay. There's lots of moose around. Uh, lots of Sarah's moose. place. Moose. Moosin. Mice. <laughs> <laughs> There's lots around Sarah's place. They uh, they put out salt blocks and stuff, and they they come around. That's super cool. Yeah. Did you guys hear about the buffalo in Banff now? Yep. Nope. But so awesome. Banff. There's bullies in buff. Banff. <laughs> <laughs> but Banff brought in like. Bison. 
yeah, a bunch of bison, but there's like uh, <laughs> some babies and like their parents and stuff. Do you and know they why? Just, to just like restart the buffalo population. Yeah. So, so Banff used to have like a very large buffalo population, um, but over hunting, like when we first settled Canada, they exterminated them all like, to extinction. Now they finally come back. Head smashed in buffalo jump. That's exactly where my mind went to. <laughs> Part of the, or that was the Indians that did that. Native First Nations. <laughs> Sorry. You unpolitically correct <laughs> dingus. Ah, come on. Um, yeah, no, that's wrong place, but yeah, no, same idea. Yeah. Uh, over killed them all to extinction. Now it's a good chunk of them in back. There you go. Super cool. I want to go see them so bad. They're all still in one place, right? Yeah. yeah. I think so. Yeah. Well, it's not like a zoo exhibit. <laughs> like, no, I know. No, but you, you can get but... close to them. Like, you can see a bear on the high. How many How many are there where you'd be able to actually be able to find I them? I think there's about 15 or 15 to 17, I want to say. Oh, there's more than that. I can look it up. Is that enough to be able to just go see them? I think that's the first number that they brought in. And then yeah, these are they're keeping them well. in an enclosed, <laughs> not enclosed, but like... Uh, in a certain a section yeah. of Banff for okay. now. And then they're opening it up more like okay. so they can go wherever they want so you have a general idea of where it was yeah okay. so i want to get down there while they're still in this like specified area so that i have my best chance of seeing them and then i can say i saw them. there's also buffalo at the zoo yeah but the zoo is <laughs> expensive no it's not <laughs> it kind of it's is it's probably less than a tank of gas to get to the i don't drive that. derek has to take me <laughs> how do you pay for your zoo ticket <laughs> no i want to see them in the wild it's different they're boring in the wild. They're boring. They're boring in the zoo. zoo. <laughs> For, okay. Actually, the, sorry. Um, <laughs> I went to the zoo with Derek not too long ago. It was the best zoo trip I've ever been on in my life. Because you saw buffalo? So no, it was I above didn't mediocre. Actually. No, it was actually sucks. incredible because all the animals were so active. Like every single one that I saw, I've never seen them like that. And there was this little red panda and. They were so cute. They were like running around, like all in their little enclosure. They were all outside. And then so this one, he like uh, ran down this log, and he like ran past us. And so I like got down low when the next one was coming because I was like, oh, he's gonna come right past the glass. And he came right up to it and put his paw on the glass, and we touched hands. You guys, <laughs> I can't even tell you how happy I got. So when you say <laughs> active animals, was it like a battle royale of animals? <laughs> no, they weren't like. <laughs> like the movie Battle Royale? Uh, <laughs> that would be an interesting zoo trip. <laughs> that would be, I guess. Yeah. But uh, no, they were just all very. When did active. you go to I don't know. Um, maybe a week, you know, maybe two weeks ago. Okay. You know, so so. My family went last Saturday, and okay. the animals were very active then. Mm -hmm. I think it's just because of the winter, I hear. They're more active in cold weather. Did you uh, see that doesn't the make any sense. I no, saw the penguins it, get fed during the zoo it, trip too, and it is crazy. That's like battle royale. They're just like, Argh! you should see me get Going fed. For it. <laughs> you should see Steven get fed. He gobbles. So um, do the penguins. All right, sixteen buffaloes got imported to Banff from Elk Islands National Park. Okay. Oh, I'm good. I was right there. I said fifteen to seventeen. Yeah. Your environmental lesson for the day, though, uh, they are considered to be a keystone species, um, which is the an animal that wouldn't seem relatable to the natural environment, but are heavily related, relatable. It's like with all the undergrowth and other ungulate populations, buffalo has a very large impact to them. That makes no sense. Doesn't matter. There's a lot of words that I don't know. <laughs> what did you say? Them. Ungulate? 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 Un un ungulate? Ungulate. Yeah. Uh, deer. Deer, elk, moose. Oh. Those are ungulates. I see. What do yeah. the buffalo do for the deer, elk, moose? Uh, they would eat what they eat, so their populations would go down. Is the idea. Wait, buffalo eat like wolves? Yes, because ungulates eat wolves. Do you think a deer eats what? a wolf? No, you no, just no, said you, they you, eat the population. No, no, they, no, they eat the same deer. thing. Yeah, so they eat grass. So there's less food for deer. Oh, I see. Yeah, so then the deer would not die off, but they'd find that happy medium again, right. basically. So you said buffaloes were heading towards extinction, but they're well, also. They were. But they're being imported in. So bu just, buffaloes think... in Western Canada were extinct. Yeah. Oh, so, I see. Yeah, so then we, there was some in Yellowstone, I believe, and these are from Elk Islands National Park, hmm. which is close-ish. Super exciting. There's a, a breed of rhino that's now extinct. That's yeah. sad. Because of poaching in Africa. Oh, speaking of poachers, there was a cool thing, I don't remember where, it's somewhere in Africa, um, about having like a wild game, or not wild game, um, 
an enclosure for animals to come in. But if you were caught poaching on there, there were people hired to kill poachers. I heard about this. Basically. So, like, you could walk around, see somebody else that's not in your group with a gun. You were legally allowed to kill that person, basically. Because they were considered to be a poacher on the land. Poaching Damn. poachers. Yeah. That'd be cool. Crazy world. All right, Stephen, we can finally get to your 30-second story. <laughs> Unless I got another keystone thing if you really care about environmental impacts. Uh, well, like... Mine's barely a story. This is more of a different topic of discussion. Because for, every time I've been on this podcast, I usually talk about stories and stuff, and then it usually somehow change into a conversation. As I've gotten older, I think I've gotten more boring. Okay. <laughs> and this is more where it's got, not necessarily me and how I've gotten boring. More just... I don't know. I feel like I've gotten less stories the older I've gotten, mainly because... Going wrong, life has changed. There's a difference between being high school and interacting with a hundred different people a day compared to being in university. Or when I worked in, at EB Games, I was dealing with a lot of different people. So I guess a lot of stories came from that. Mm-hmm. Like working at this new place, I love it. I'm very happy where I'm working now. So there's, it's like my stories from this week. Oh, I sent off ten emails on Thursday. Oh. Like, oh man, what a story! <laughs> like, I don't think you're more boring. I think you just do boring work. Maybe. <laughs> Because I still feel like I have interesting stories, but it's just, I, I don't know I if I'm not getting as many, or maybe just in recent memory I'm not getting as many. I witnessed a bobcat kill a mouse. That was exciting. Yeah, <laughs> I don't like animals, so. Okay, so you have to like things to be interesting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't like the zoo, don't like animals, man. It's, it's been a tough and rough life being here. It's possible that, like, when you were younger, you just seemed less boring to yourself, because... <laughs> Things had more impact because they were new experiences, right? Well, like, I still, I don't know. I think it's more, how much younger are you thinking? I'm thinking, like, late elementary, junior high. Okay, because I'm thinking, like, university and state, there is more. Oh. Like, more interesting things. Happen. Or maybe it's just that with my work now, there's a lot of sensitive information. So any interesting things that do happen, I can't necessarily discuss. So maybe that's just it. Maybe. But it's more just like how people get older, just how things change like that. I don't know. Yeah. Because I, I do have one interesting story from we I guess I can share, or I think it's interesting. Um, somebody will relate to you. Yeah. Well, I, I have a friend whose sister started dating somebody recently, and uh, this was oh. her first boyfriend, and two days in, she posted on Facebook how she can't imagine a day without him. Oh, oh no. great. So we decided to make bets last night on either engagement <laughs> or breakup date. So we have two, oh, we have two <laughs> pools running right now. I have a hundred bucks up on the line for this. Oh wow! Anyway, we're oh, we're we're, we're higher rollers here. So what? A hundred bucks is high rolling. <laughs> so what's your prediction? Um. So I think uh, there was we talked about this for like three hours. We talked. Uh, we heard some of his parents' opinions. We talked about past experience. Um. My guess is July engagement. If they make it past that and they're not engaged yet, I'm thinking October breakup. Okay. Um, so yeah, those are my two guesses. I have a chance to win 300 bucks here. So is it $100 on each pool? It's 50 bucks on each. Okay. There's four of us total. I see. So if they, that's the other two. They could get engaged and then break up. I could win twice. Uh, so true. that's the real <laughs> dream. That's the hopes here. <laughs> wow. That is um, awful. Uh, that's no, so it's awesome. cool. But we have ideas. So like June, they're going to a wedding together. So it's like, okay, well, in that case, that might be the first time they converse about it. They're Christians who generally get engaged sooner. So that plays into the discussion. Um, he's potentially moving away in, I don't know, like, this is like his last year of schooling, and he's said he probably has to move out of the city, in which case they might get married before they want to move out together, because, again, they're Christians, and they don't believe in living together, a bunch of them. True. Um, so that's right, there's a lot of discussion happening. This was, we were going to play Mao that night, uh, in Incredible <laughs> Park. Use, don't use his name in vain. Yeah. Um, we were going to play now, and we, we dealt out the cards as this conversation came up, and we just did not play that night because we spent the next three, four hours talking <laughs> about, I think she's going to break up on this deck. <laughs> did you guys, uh, swap this? Uh, strengths, weakness, opportunities, and threats? Yeah. Yeah. I'm um, something? What? We, so, uh, in Silicon Valley, the TV it, show. It's a idea in project management. You swap something. I'll let you continue with yours. But. You, it's essentially a four quadrant. Well, I guess every quadrant has. Never mind. It's essentially <laughs> um, uh, four sections: one labeled strength, one labeled weakness, one labeled opportunities, and one labeled threats. And you use all aspects of a decision you're trying to make, and you sort them into these four categories to try to help decide on something. So in the show, they're trying to decide whether or not to help a guy out. 
It's as vague as I can make this. Do you care about spoilers, Aaron? No. All right, let's spoil away. Okay, so for anybody <laughs> who does care, listen to this: Silicon Valley season two, uh, halfway through the season, roughly. There's one episode where the, uh, they go to an energy drink company. They're trying to like pitch their product to them, uh, which they're a compression company, so they're well making files smaller. All right. right. And uh, yeah, the idea is that one of the guys they meet there is a stuntman, and his girlfriend is super cute. One of the guys fall, like falls in love with her. And the guy's gonna do this jump, and they have like how fast he needs to do on this whiteboard, and they have all the equations. And this guy's just a complete jerk off to them. So he walks away, and they're like, hey, that equation's wrong. He's going way too slow. He's gonna crash and die because he's doing so tall the buildings. And they're like, should we tell him? <laughs> <laughs> so they're like, well, if we don't tell him, she might be grieving and might need pity sex, and that's a strength. <laughs> oh my God. It's a weakness because he might die. It's also an opportunity. <laughs> it's an opportunity because this might call for more regulations in the stunt industry to save more lives. It's an opportunity to help people there. Yeah. Awesome. And then there's a threat because maybe he gave her an STD, so it's a threat that could, it can spread <laughs> to this other dude. But in that. Uh, situation, he gets to have sex with her, and that's a strength. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, so they're like, they're just these two dudes just sitting back looking at this big SWAT board, and it just says, Let Blaine die at the top. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, uh, or what was it, strengths? His name's Blaine. <laughs> <laughs> so that's kind of stupid. Or like, strengths, uh, Blaine's face melts off, or something. <laughs> something You'll know. be having to know, I didn't make. Uh, I did make a reference to Silicon Valley when we were talking about because I can't remember what was the one that was brought up. I said that's an opportunity. Yeah. Maybe it was when moving away. It was like, oh, like why would they get married so soon? Oh, because he's moving away. That's an opportunity. Yeah. Married. But um, so, yeah, I'm guessing engage in July. I will be back on this podcast. The the earliest day for somebody to win win money is May first. So the guy okay. gets to break up by May. Um, from there, it's nothing in June, and then July to October has different bets for each of those months for different people. So. The best one that could happen, though, is there's a guy who guessed engagement in October and another guy who guessed breakup in October. So it would be hilarious if they got engaged and broke up in the same month and I'd have to pay out twice because <laughs> I don't have my money on either of those months. <laughs> so um, that'd be awesome. May 1st is my anniversary, so that's good luck, I guess. I, I do not wish a breakup on you and Sarah, so... Oh, no, no, no. I'm just saying, I'm... if they <laughs> break up, I guess, on our anniversary, it just makes us look good. Yeah. Uh, if so, I will split my winnings. Oh no, I'm not May. I'm in July. Never mind. Yeah. You can split your winnings with me. Uh, I was going to, but uh, I don't have any money in May, so no. Uh, I mean, my anniversary is in July first. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling Sarah that he doesn't know when your anniversary is. Oh, I forgot another thing that she's gotten mad at me about. Valentine's <laughs> Day. <laughs> yeah. Um, Did you really? Actually... Uh, no, no, not Valentine's Day. I know when Valentine's Day is. Uh, it was other things. Her it... birthday. No, it was, uh, we were playing, uh, a Jackbox game. We were playing that, uh, Sleuths one. The, the spy okay. one. And, uh, basically in this game, there's, uh, one segment where everybody gets... If, say you're playing with four people. Three people will get a prompt to say, uh, here's a thing. If you've done this, raise your hand after the timer runs out. Okay. But one person is the spy and doesn't get the prompt, so they have to kind of... But they'll get a similar prompt. Yeah, they'll get a similar one. So in this case, it was, um, what was it? It was had a first kiss, or had a kiss on your first date or something? Don't look at me, I don't have a clue what you're on about. I think or was this one when we, us and Nick played? Yes. Oh. So... I, I remember that still. <laughs> okay. Um, so it was just like, kiss on your first date. And... I, like, I got the real thing, but I didn't put my hand up. <laughs> oh, no, I remember this now. But I should have, because Sarah and I did have that. And she looked at me, and she's like, seriously? <laughs> got mad at me. Anyway. It's a fun game. It's a really fun game. Um, it it's made, sounds like it makes no sense, but once you get the hang of it, it's a really fun game. You know what else is fun is Bomb Core. Yeah. Which is essentially keep talking and nobody explodes, but Jackbox. So... Each person gets instructions that cancel out each other's instructions on how to defuse a bomb. Okay. It's, yeah, it's yeah. So like, there's a, the easiest way I can explain it. There's a bomb, and everybody on their phone uh, is given instructions on what to do with the bomb, like cut the red wires or whatever. So yeah. it's like a logic puzzle. Yes, yeah. but everybody gets a different thing, and you have to communicate with each other before time runs. Yeah, so like just like a logic puzzle. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. No, that's cool. That sounds fun. I don't know. It is fun. Yeah. We should do it sometime. 
you want to do it after this? Oh, we could. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Silicon Valley. Great show. Yeah, that show was wonderful. I highly pro- recommend. You've been recommending it to me for a while, and then I finally got yeah. to watch it. Um, we- I'm glad you liked it. I was nervous that it was going to be... Over my head? <laughs> no, because like, it, hits, it hits the perfect target demographic for me. Like I'm right in the person they're trying to market to. So I was like, oh, I'm like, maybe it's only funny to those people, and I'm just yeah. horribly biased. But it's, I was hoping it would be a good show. But. It's like a mix between the best parts of Big Bang Theory and a stoner flick, like stoner comedy. <laughs> Because most of Big Bang Theory is just garbage. Yeah. <laughs> but some is, of it is good. Is this the same friend that you want to get the Halo score on? Yes, this yes, is okay. the same friend. Okay, so I was going to bring this up. When, I, when you started talking about this, I thought this was the story that you wanted to talk no, about. No, because I told them you were interested in coming to that. Okay, so they said, they said it's going to happen. He's going to try to figure it out uh, soon. Of Sweet. So I guess the other story for this, or did you want to tell it? Oh, no, it's all good. Okay. Or, do you want to, like, the precursor to this? So we, the whole waxing of you... Um, gave me the great idea to shave something into Steven's chest. Okay. And we, I couldn't figure out what to do. I wanted to do a tie or a heart or like skull and cross or something like that. It'd be really funny. I'm upside down cross. And... <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little vain saying this. Exactly. Um, then Steven was like, we were talking this for a while and Steven's going on. He's like, I don't know what to do. Can you? I don't want to do anything too bad. But I got this friend, that sister's now got a boyfriend that I want to hype him up, basically. So, but, I, I don't know, explain yeah, So, this friend I play a lot of Halo with, um, and he always made a point of, if he ever had a daughter or anything, uh, he would only let her date a guy who could beat him in Halo. <laughs> nice. So, with his sister's boyfriend, he's like, he doesn't have to beat me, but I want to put up an acceptable score. So, like, you need to invite us over to be your hype crew. <laughs> yeah. Just every time you get a kill or anything, we'll just start, like, cheering. We'll bring signs. It'll be great. So I told Alex, I will shave his name into my chat. And Jeff, like, <laughs> flash the other two in the middle of the match. <laughs> like, yeah, bro, let's go. That's awesome. So, um, yeah, the, the, my friend said she's very interested. And they said you're invited if you wanted to come with. So. Let's do it. That's so good. Great. You gotta film that crap. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we will. Yeah, no. Wait, wait, so is that the standard though? It's got to be like at my level ish, as horrible as that is? Uh, do, do you set a standard? We have not set a standard yet, I'm not sure. Because it also depends what Halo game they play. Yeah, obviously. Because, you know, if it's like Halo 1 Derelict, that's completely different compared to Halo 1 Chill Out. Right, right. Compared to Halo I don't 4. Know what that means. Yeah. You don't have to whisper <laughs> that to me. Don't worry, it would, it would be. There needs to be a lot more discussion, perhaps similar to the discussion of the. Their breakup, <laughs> the breakup of like what would be acceptable. Okay. But, yeah, I don't know. See, that story's not boring. <laughs> so, so wait, except that's, it's a good story, but I don't know. It's I don't know if I'm getting as many of those nowadays. I feel like I get a new story whenever I hang out with those guys, though. They are a really good group of dudes. Um, I have a lot of fun hanging out with them. You tell them stories about us occasionally. <laughs> okay, I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> Depends. They, they know they know your name. If oh, I was referencing stories like, oh, I was hanging out with my old high school. Oh, I was hanging out with Ben. Like, oh, yeah, Ben. Good oh, dude. Sweet. So, yeah. I am a good dude. Yeah, well, you know. Debatable. <laughs> Speaking of good dudes, Aaron, what's going on with you? <laughs> oh, God. Uh, that is a... Tw- Aaron is now... <laughs> Her name is spelt like a dude, might be. <laughs> I, I, no. had a, I had a very good friend in junior high who had the same name as you. Was you like a girl? No, a dude. Oh, yeah. Daily? Ten years. No. He was, he, his name is also spelled that way, and he is also an awesome dude. Hmm. But, I, I've met him a couple times. Yeah. It's he's really short. Having a guy's name He, he is very short, that is true. But he's really awesome. He was feisty in junior high. I think it was because he was short. <laughs> <laughs> he was like a Napoleon. But, anyway, sorry. Aaron, what's up? What's not, new with you? Not too much. Good, good stories that aren't as boring as Steven's life? Uh, I mean, the most exciting thing that happened to me in two weeks is touching paws with a red panda at the zoo, so... <laughs> <laughs> Can, I don't know if this will ruin red pandas for you, but they're not at all, like, soft. Are they not? They're, like, completely coarse. They're like they hedgehogs. Look, but they look awesome. Yeah, but I'm if you were, like, to pet one, one you would, like, bleed. Really? I'm pretty sure they're like sandpaper, like it's horrible to touch them. That ruins my dreams of cuddling them. Yeah. Are they actually pandas? I don't know. Oh, uh, no, I don't we think so. We had this debate. They, they are not related to But it's like koala pandas. bears aren't actually bears. Yeah. They're marsupials. Bingo. Huh. They're cute too. Are panda you bears can hold even those? Uh, panda bears are. 
Are they bears? Is Steven a bear? Steven's bear. Yeah. yeah. He's big <laughs> enough. What's a group of pandas called? A box. A box? Pandas box. No, that's a stupid joke. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate you catching that one before you finish yeah. saying it. Uh, Alex, you play rugby. Yeah. Uh, Canada is joining um, the a world rugby league. They're already in one. The uh, <laughs> the Toronto uh, Wolfpack. Did you know about this? No. Well, there is like the Prairie Wolfpack, which is like the Calgary and like Lethbridge team, which is like Atkins. I don't know, it's the equivalent of, like, um, the Hitmen, almost, or the Flames. I'm talking, like, world class. Oh, okay, no, this is news to me. Yeah, like, the, the, the legitimate like, question, is it a women's team or a men's team? I think it's a men's team. Okay, because I'm pretty sure the women's team for Canada either placed really well or won, like, the last Olympics. Uh, oh, yeah, they did. The women's came in third, I think. This is just. I just yeah. wanted to bear on that, but I can bear on that. I mean, third qualify. is pretty good stuff. Men's didn't qualify, the women's did. Please, third? In the Olympics. Uh, maybe if you're not very good at anything, get there. <laughs> Gee, um, it's, but no, well, it depends. If there is like teams like that, I guess that's cool. Um, but I don't know because there's like Team Canada it, that plays it, 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 it's a, Team New Zealand. It's the Canada. Challenge Cup. Okay. Uh, against Sidal is what it's called, and that like I just found this in uh, Twitter um, trending or whatever it is, and <laughs> they describe what rugby is. Oh God. They're like, it's like the NFL, but it's faster, and nobody has pads. It's like, yeah, we know what rugby is. This isn't new. <laughs> yeah. Okay, is rugby the sport where everyone does that hukka dance? Yes. <laughs> the, <Okay>. the, the, <laughs> the hukka dance. So what's it, what's it called? Haka. The haka, yeah. I was it's, close. It's a New Zealand it's... war dance that they do, that the Maori do before you. Nice, because I went to um, this frat party one time, and they made the kids that were rushing, like... Take off their shirts and do the ha what haka haka and do the haka dance. Isn't that incredibly dance. disrespectful? Isn't there like a long like heritage well, vibe? There, there's a whole the haka is I don't, I don't even know if I'm pronouncing it right. Um, it's considered to be like the equivalent to their like national anthem. Almost. Oh wow! Well, so like during like, the last World jerks. Cup, yeah, during like the last World Cup, um, you like stop and you like link arms, whatever, and you sing the national anthem during the game. Um, you're supposed to stop and let them do their war dance, which is a different part of the national anthem, but it was either the French or the Irish, um, but like walked up and it was like very disrespectful. And they like, oh. they, cause they move while they were doing it. It's uh, like a whole, it was a whole thing. Is this just New Zealand that does this? Yes, I believe so. They are way cooler than everybody. <laughs> oh, yeah, they're also like six foot two and like 300 pounds that yeah. can run like, like so a, wait, a it's four just mile. a New Zealand thing, it's not a rugby thing. No, I'm it's pretty a, sure. It, otherwise, if it's not New Zealand, it's like the Polynesian Islands. Not, I would say, from like, what I, I heard, it has something to do with like the native people who yeah. live there. Like it was their dance. Exactly. Like, oh. like, like before they go on like a hunt, basically they would do the dance. Apparently, it's a war dance. I was saying, That's sweet. From what I heard, I I don't have any official sources for any of this. It's actually like if you're wanting to do it, they actually like very much encourage you to go down, like meet the natives yeah. there, and they'll teach it to you and like allow you to do it. Oh yeah, you, like, have, it's you like, have to be blessed to do it. Basically, yeah. like bonus high school. Um, they used to do it. That's where and I heard they, this from. They, according to like Maori law or something like that, they aren't allowed to do it unless a New Zealand player played on their team. So oh. there was one year they went on tour to New Zealand, like the team got blessed, and then like a couple years later, like Maori could play on their team. But as far as I know now, they still do it, but they have no connection to it. They have no mm. team that's gone down within the past three years and no Maori kids on the team. Mm-hmm. So it's them doing it, but it's technically disrespectful. Wow. Yes. If you really want to get into it. I would love to go to New Zealand. That'd be cool. Um, I have connections there, actually. That's because you're a Lord of the Rings nerd. Nah. <laughs> I actually, uh, we have family friends that live there. Because one of my cousins went and went to university there. And the people he stayed with were still in contact with. My mom went there like two or three years ago now. Oh, that's cool. And uh, they went and explored the whole island. I have a map of Middle Earth up on my wall up there. Which is like it's the all the sets from Lord of the Rings, but on the New Zealand. So it goes back to you're a Lord of the Rings nerd. That's why you want to go visit. <laughs> did you? Ever it's watch, fine. Did you ever watch a long walk? The Rusty video. The simple walk. Simple walk. Damn it. The simple, simple walk in the mortar. Yes, yeah. I did. Uh, there was there was a series of videos. I don't know how many there are. I don't know either. Six or eight or something. Um, where these two guys who are big Lord of the Rings fan, they walked from the Shire to 
Mordor. Thank you. Um, it's like, called a simple walk into Mordor. Oh, is it, I don't know. I don't know the full name. Um, I, I, I thought it was a long walk. Um, you know, they actually they legitimately hiked from one end of the island to the other, basically where they filmed the sets of the two different locations. Yeah. It's like it's cool. It's like a cool four day hike thing. or whatever. They they carried a, a ring and then buried it at the the mountain where That's Mount funny. Doom is. But is there where Doctor Doom lives? No. No. Oh. Different universe. Where Doctor Disrespect lives. Oh. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> uh, a grouping of pandas, though. Yeah. I, I got I got a name, but you guys got to guess. A pool. A pool of pandas. No. A nursery. Ooh, no. A class. Oh, man. Uh, no. Uh, a group. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, a squad of pandas. No. Um, according to this uh, website, a pack of pandas is called a sleuth or sloth. But pandas are kind of their own special and get their own collective names to choose from. A bamboo of pandas... An embarrassment of pandas, or a cupboard of pandas. Is there an another? Is there another animal that's an embarrassment? <laughs> I'm, I'm going to yeah. Google what Strong. what animal is an embarrassment to see what comes up. <laughs> what did you do for Valentine's Day? Uh, we went to the Cheesecake Cafe. Nice. It Ooh. was very expensive. Expensive and moderate as far as yeah. quality goes. Didn't you go there on like your first date or something as we well? We did. We went. Uh, was we that went why to... you went back? No, uh, we just kind of like it there because they have amazing cheesecake. We... Do they have like special pop or something? What does that mean? <laughs> I don't know. I like cherry cola. No, I don't know. I was told they had like special pop, and what... there's a grape one that tastes really good. What makes pop special? I don't. I I, I never had it because I was gonna go there with an ex. He told me we were he was like yeah i'm gonna take you here blah 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 blah. and then he broke up with me later that day oh so never got to go (laughs) right it's it's just down the street well we should have gone there you guys (laughs) next time you can't afford a uh a ticket (laughs) zoo (laughs) yeah but alex was buying my dinner today so we're good uh yeah yeah no it's uh (laughs) like we went there for dinner and it was quite expensive and the food was not great and, like, they served us our food without utensils and stuff like that. Oh. Like, I'm paying this much. I want, like, actual decent service. Mm-hmm. But... but the cheesecake was worth it? Oh, yeah. It's amazing. I That's couldn't good. finish it. It's oh. too it's too rich. Mm. Like, you have to, like, eat as much as you can and then save the rest. But, anyway. Do you have to get dinner or can you just get cheesecake? You can just get it. It's a, there's a cheesecake bar and a restaurant. Oh. So you can, like, go up and order a full, like, round yeah, of cake. Yeah, full. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they sell you just like a full tray, full dish. I don't know. Sweet. You can buy full cakes. Speaking of cakes, I learned through a number file video the correct way to cut a cake. Normally, people will take uh, like a chef's knife or something, and we're talking about a round cake, like a cylindrical cake, and they will put the tip of the knife into the center of the cake and cut out towards the outside and then do it again and get a wedge of cake but the problem is when you do this like you can have your slice of cake and then say you're the only person eating this cake steven um because you think he cuts up pieces when he eats the cake by himself (laughs) no just his hands turn into spoons (laughs) he just goes to town he doesn't even use hands half the time just smashes his face into it (laughs) no uh but when you do this uh say say steven's eating this cake and he's had his slice and then he's done with it, so he puts it into the fridge. And the sides are exposed, The right? sides are exposed. It loses its moistness. So, its moistness. Yeah. The the correct way to cut a uh, cake is to cut a line straight through, not the center, but slightly offset, and then another line uh, symmetrical to that. So you have a... Parallel? Uh, yes. Yes, but symmetrical. <laughs> so like on the other side of center. This is difficult to explain. You're, it's so, like, so if you have a round piece, and you're so you're trying you to get, you're pretty trying to take out the very middle of the cake. Yes. yes, you take out the middle, and then you scoosh the two sides of this cake so together. So you what to the two sides of the cake? You sco- scoosh it. You scoosh them together so that all exposed sides are touching other exposed side sides, and then it doesn't lose moistness. And then the next time you go to take a slice, 
you do it the same, but that's a big slice of cake. Right, but the you, whole... You can cut it in half, half, though. Yeah. But then what do you do with that piece? That piece... Yeah, they say that's not going to scoosh together nicely. <laughs> no, 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 but if you, like, cut out the middle, or, wait, are you saying that the, the middle piece is too yeah. big? Yeah. Yeah, but if you cut out the middle, then you just cut it in half. That's you the thing. Two, two long pieces. That's all it is. But then you have to eat both pieces. What he's saying is it's a lot yeah, to but, eat. Or you just give one one person to another person. But you're but the we only person you eat. At the same point, you don't have friends. Oh, okay, I, I don't know. You're kind of fucked. But have a big appetite. Here's the thing. It's, it's not a big piece of cake. It's just a long piece of cake. Right? You can adjust how big a wedge of cake is by the angle at which you cut it. Yeah. You can adjust how big this is by how close your parallel lines are. Yeah, but at what point is the cake... <sighs> and you have to do this with a bread knife, not a chef's knife. Because it, it, it's a longer, straighter blade. Yeah. But how well do the pieces scoosh together? Because who's to say that, like... Okay, you're going to ruin the edges of the gap. cake. That's, it's definitely... And here's what you do, is you stretch a rubber band around it, and, that and then you ruin the size of the cake. I feel like that would just cut the cake in half. I, so this is the real thing here. <laughs> it's the fact that nobody leaves cake to, like, just sit there for more than a few days. So, but it's more that it doesn't matter. <laughs> but any amount of time is too much time. You have to cut it and immediately scoosh okay. it. Yeah, if we're going like a game theory idea of <laughs> being like a completely like any loss is considered bad, then yeah, I'd agree. But then I'd actually argue that you're ruining the sides of the cake. In which case, you're just maybe ruining the shape. I don't know. Like, I saw a video of this and he put rubber bands around it and it worked. It didn't cut the cake, it didn't. Ruin the side. If there's icing it must on be the side, though, thick yeah. cake, then. then the icing is going to come off on the rubber bands. What does that mean? That's true. Well, because, like, how would you get the rubber band off without. Uh, you don't It'd take be it so off. Messy. You just cut your next slice, and that will push yeah. the rubber but, band off. But, I mean, down. like, the rubber band is going to squeeze it, which means it's going to cut into the icing. You're ruining the icing. Mm hmm. Hmm. But you cut into the icing with your teeth, and then it doesn't matter. It all goes down the same way. Uh, if you cut into the unmoist part with movement. your teeth, and it doesn't matter. It goes down the same way. No, but it's the taste you're trying to preserve, not the form. Uh, I think presentation is half the meal. Oh. <laughs> I'm a big presentation guy. Yeah. Yeah. Big I give my meal. I, I, I give lots of big presentations. I, I, I like a show with my meal. <laughs> This just a, so you like it when strippers jump out of this cake. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually exactly where my mind was going. Yes. Uh, I, uh, I heard a bad joke. It was, um, I think I've told you this one before. Or maybe you told me this one. <laughs> I don't know if I like being thrown under mm -hmm. the bus for telling a bad joke. I think you told me this one, actually. <laughs> it's not right. a bad, it's a really funny joke, but it's, like, bad for insensitivity. It was, uh, how can you tell if you're at a bulimic bachelor party? The cake jumps out of the girl. Oh, gross! <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Did you find that thing you were looking for, Alex? No. I, I can't find it. I have no idea what else is called an embarrassment. Hmm. Uh, except for me trying to find this thing. I know what a group of zebras is called, in case you guys are wondering. A zeal of zebras. A zeal. That's a trick question. A group of whack rappers are known as an embarrassment. <laughs> what's, oh, a, God. what's a whack rapper? A rapper's not very good. Oh, no. <laughs> whack. whack. I got it. <laughs> Man, this is just not your night today. <laughs> I I've never heard those two words be put together so closely. No. I thought you need whack, to listen to more rap music. I definitely don't. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Do you guys want to play safe word? Sure. I was. I got a thing to talk about afterwards. It involves McDonald's. Well, you want to say I also have something that involves McDonald's. Me too. Okay. All day breakfast. Okay, oh, okay. no, we know that. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, no, McDonald's, McDonald's breakfast. Sucks. Are you guys crazy? Oh, oh my McDonald's gosh, sucks. it just started in Canada like two days ago, and I'm pumped. Go on with safe word, then we'll Sorry. go through our McDonald's section. <laughs> yeah, do that. Okay, your first word to define is tall gray. Tall gray. Uh, it's two words actually, but that's besides the point. When you go to Starbucks and you're too lazy to go and get a full order, like saying you want to play some vids instead of video games, so you, you go vidding, home. some say, <laughs> some say vidding. <laughs> uh, it's when you just go up and be like, "Yo, give me a tall gray," which is a tall or earl gray, because you're a chump and only want wait tall small, right? Yeah. Yeah, I tell you want you want a small size. So there's a genius and, and marketing you, on that to call the tall the smallest one. I know. And then you put like five bucks on the counter and you get your tall gray. 
Yeah. There you go. Done. Nice. There's actually a reason behind all the Starbucks namings. Like, oh. it's, it's like three or four different languages. Oh, yeah. Well, Grandi in Spanish is large. And then Ven- Venti in Italian is... Large, large as well, probably. Large. <laughs> no, no. Venti is, means 20. It does. Because it's 20 ounces. Or something sure, like I, that. I have no idea. Um, I've been to the first Starbucks, which is cool. The first one? The first Starbucks in Seattle. Oh. Yeah, that was nothing exciting. It was really small. It was really old school. They had, like, old school logos and, like, merch as well around there. That's cool, though. Yeah. You can say you've been. Tall Gray, Steven. Go. What you got? You bring up Al Capone. I'm going to hate you. <laughs> can I pass on this one for another two minutes? Go for it. Aaron, right, I got, got this. Tall Gray, um, going off of the recent, re- recently released second Fifty Shades Grey movie. What? Yep. Fifty um, Shades Darker, I man. Feel like, I feel like a Tall Gray is a dominant <laughs> standing above a submissive and tall. <laughs> wasn't, nice. Wasn't the, guy's, wasn't the guy's last name Grey? Gray, yeah. Okay. yeah. So it it's makes just... sense, kind of. Okay. So it's a... It's a tall dominant. Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay, you guys know the phrase tall, dark, and mysterious, or something like that? Tall something. Mysterious. Tall, dark, and handsome? Is that, is that it's it? One of it's something. In, yeah. There's one word. So. Regardless, uh, a tall gray, then, is someone who doesn't quite fit that <laughs> threshold. So it's like, I know, like, it's kind of like when you start getting older and you can't be as picky with who you want to, like, go out with. So now it is. I oh, know I can't get tall, dark, and handsome. I'll go tall gray. It's good enough. I see. Yeah. Meets expectations. No Sorry. Meets expectations. Yeah, you know, like he won't go cheat on me, and he has a job, and that's enough. All right. Um. <laughs> it's I. It's difficult to say which of you is closest. <laughs> Wait, are we bringing back the nugs as well? Uh, no. no. <laughs> um, <laughs> this definition of tall gray is an extraterrestrial or a weird person. Oh. Dominant. Or someone who's being <laughs> awkward or weird. So you can refer to them as being a tall gray if they're just like the weird guy at the party. That's just like not talking to anybody, kind of like that, I guess. <clears throat> Christian Gray in Fifty Shades. I was definitely close. Nope. Sure. It's not <laughs> the <laughs> asshole that goes and calls it a tall gray instead of getting an Earl Grey tea. I, I hate to bring uh, memes into this podcast, and I'm so sorry, but the idea documentary, uh, yeah. their fan page will post like idea memes on there. There's yeah. one where it was like, my interests are a little different or whatever, and she's like, show me, and just cuts to idea albums like hanging on a wall. Yeah. <laughs> just like, yeah. That's so what's up. Your next term is queening. Queening. You should get this, Alex. It says it's a British term. Okay, you guys know John the Joie. Yes. Okay. I'm known for many inappropriate YouTube videos. Uh, That's a matter of perspective. I can't remember what who he was comparing it to, but he referred to giving somebody a crown of cum. Oh, Ew. And that is queening somebody. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I see. It's a good guess. Uh, queening is having a monarchy for like 90 years and being almost 100. Okay. Like the queen. <laughs> I, I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea where to go with this. We say it's British. I don't. I honestly don't know. Okay. Okay, so you know like the saying, like every, behind every like Successful man is man a, is a woman. yeah, thank you. You, you so know like, that one, but you don't that, know what tall darn That tall woman who's <laughs> like really supportive, like top notch girlfriend, she's queening. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. So like when every king has his queen. Oh, okay. Yeah. So she's, she's wearing queening. pants. You sure. Okay. <laughs> I, I get it. Mm-hmm. Um. Nope. <laughs> Y'all wrong. Uh, it's an S and M thing. Okay. Queening is the act of a woman sitting on her subservient's face. Okay. All right. Also known as throning. So. <laughs> uh, the next word is this is a really easy one. You guys should get this. A floor drobe. Can you say that again? Floor drobe. Oh, go ahead. Uh, no, 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 I have to go first. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe you actually listened to me. <laughs> You're not cleaning right <laughs> now. When, when you have, no, I'm not. 
Uh, where instead of putting your clothes away like an adult, you can just have them all on the floor and pick and choose from there. Okay. So like you do your laundry instead of like folding and putting them away. It's like, oh, the spot on the floor is good enough. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I literally did exactly that last night. Because <laughs> they were all on my bed and it was too late to fold them, so they are still in a pile. So I am sticking with my previous answer of my entire bedroom. So we have the same answer, Stephen and I. So when you got a ship and a ship's rock, so when you get a wardrobe and you mount it to the floor, so that your wardrobe doesn't come falling over. I appreciate you going to make answer instead of taking my answer like Aaron did. Okay, no, technically, uh, I raised my hand, so I should have been able to go first. Nobody can see you raise your hand. But you guys can. I I didn't see anything. I (laughs) called it, though. I said, go ahead, Aaron. And then Steven just queened you. You (laughs) you need to talk faster. Listen to more rap music. I started talking, then you told me to stop, so I did. (laughs) So you're... No, Alex and Ben don't listen to me. (laughs) (laughs) Steven's the tall gray. (laughs) (laughs) Um, yeah, Steven, you got it. Hey. Yeah, and Aaron, I guess. Uh, no, no, no. <laughs> uh, because that one was so stupid and easy, we're doing another one. FPH. FPH. Three letters, FPH. It's an acronym. I thought you were, in, you were doing, like, MPH, like Neil Patrick Harris. Like the, uh, Harold and Kumar thing. Oh, no. MPH. FPH. FPH. It stands for Fully Porking Hotties. Fully. Fully. But yeah, you're not going, like, half in and going <laughs> home. Uh, you're going all the way. I will accept two answers for this, but that was not one of them. It's F-P-A? Yes. Mm-hmm. Oh. I got nothing. Well, you have to come up with something. Okay, Alex, go first. You need three words. Uh, it's what would be on the front of a dating website saying finding potential hotties. Okay. <laughs> good one. That is a good one. Or fph.com, finding potential hotties. Yeah, yeah, I get it. What do you think that comes up with? I have no idea. <laughs> Funny <laughs> penis hairs. <laughs> <laughs> the way you so matter of fact you said that. I got it. Funny penis hairs. What, what makes a penis hair funny? I don't know. Like, Any hair on your it's, it's perfectly straight. It's just like a <laughs> Yeah, that like would be spike. interesting. Oh, God, that the, would be awful. The dick or the hair? The hair. No. Most, most penis hairs are curly. So, a, a funny one would be a perfectly straight one. Like a spike. Yeah. Like a spear. Oh, it's literally if you guys st- have any of that, y'all should shave it. Because, no. I like to gel mine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, FPH is, was bought by some company who's just looking to turn around and sell it. Uh, no, it can be ours for $195,000. I don't have that kind of money. Not yet. Why is it such a high number? Because it's F. That's a really small, like, domain to have. All of them got bought up very quickly. Hmm. Uh, very quickly. Price took a little while, but, um... Yeah, small domains like that are worth a lot. Hmm. Um, thing like RT.com. Um, yeah. For like Russia t- today. Yeah. Stuff like that. That's expensive. Yeah. Um, the actual answer, or the two answers, one of them is frags per hour. Oh, okay. So I was expecting that from you, Stephen, but you, drop the you ball. failed. You me. dropped the frag. Um, uh, that's because nobody has said frag since like 2004. <laughs> Doom. Uh, since Doom, please. That was <laughs> in the 90s. Get out of here. There's a the other definition is fat people hate. Oh, actually, I knew that one. It's the thriving community found on Reddit. Yep. So I uh, I'm pretty sure they were shut down. Wait, so is it hate on fat people or fat people hate stuff? Uh, no, it's people who are, like, disgustingly mean to overweight people. Oh. Yeah. Um, it's, like, like, they straight find people on Facebook and just bully them. It's horrible. Oh, that's not good. You people should feel bad. Uh, and <laughs> the community was banned, I just checked. All right. Oh, so, well. There you go. Uh, it's, they say that the demographics of FPH tend to be intelligent rational, productive, and healthy members of society who are angry at the degradation they see around them. <laughs> <laughs> That's horrible. We did it. McDonald's talk. McDonald's. Uh, not that this is McDonald's talk, but this is just news about McDonald's. Um, in Arizona, McDonald's wasn't allowed to go and open up a restaurant with the golden arches because the yellow of the arch um, 
contrast it too much against the desert. Oh. There's a there's a law that says you can't have buildings or landscape or like monuments or whatever that will contrast the desert too much. So they made them have I think it's turquoise, like a turquoise golden arch basically, and they had to trademark that. So it's a turquoise so, arch. Basically, so it looks like that. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, I know. I think I've seen that before. Oh, so it's, a, it's the first one to ever happen, but yeah. Huh. Because why not? That's interesting. That's all I got. Next McDonald's story. Their breakfast suck. Oh, oh, all no. day breakfast in Canada is huge. What? All, all day is good, but McDonald's breakfast is lacking. Like A and W's the top. Denny's yeah, no. Is your epi- you know. A and W's no, definitely not top. A and W is delicious. Even it their was eggs good. taste crazy. Oh, it's so good. A and W breakfast is good. It's definitely not the best. Mm. What's the best then? McDonald's pancakes. Whoa, 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 are we talking just getting breakfast sandwiches, or talking about like a full sit down breakfast? Oh yeah, I was gonna say like Denny's and Phil's are like the the top ones. Mm. I can't say I'm familiar with Phil's, but. Really? No, Phil's is delicious. Okay. I, I, I haven't been to too many diners outside of Denny's. Okay. So. No, I'm just talking like fast food, breakfast sandwich, and coffee okay. and go. But McD- A&W's coffee sucks, I will say that. Yeah, that's true. McDonald's coffee is very good. It is. But their McDonald's breakfast, breakfast, breakfast sandwiches lacking. are pretty mediocre. Yeah. I go to Tim Hortons. <laughs> yeah, but like, like, Tim, Tim Hortons is pretty good. Tim Hortons is like a, for me, it's a, it's a good good. But A&W, it's a good breakfast, bad coffee. Uh, McDonald's is a Tim bad Hortons breakfast. Tim coffee is very bad. I don't care what anybody yeah. says. I, I drink a lot of it. I was going to say, but like, yeah, you, you put anything in it? Uh, like cream and sugar? Yes. yes. Uh, yeah, I'll usually go one of each. Yeah. That's that, called a regular. That, that coffee is horrible black. If you go to Tim Hortons and you ask for a regular coffee, it's one cream and sugar. Have you ever asked for a Gretzky? No. I did once. What is that? Uh, nine creams, nine sugars. <laughs> Ew! <laughs> yep. Uh, I felt bad because the guy I asked for it from was like, it was, he had like an in-training badge. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, can I get nine creams and nine sugars? And he literally just leaned to our table like scared. He's like, I don't know if I can do it. I'm like, I don't know if I'm allowed. I'm like, I'll cover for you. It'll be awesome. He's like, you're right. <laughs> just like, he's like, here you go. <laughs> so happy to be yeah. here. Oh, you probably made that dude's day. Oh, probably. Awesome. We can do that now. I've never ordered a Gretzky. I feel like oh. I should have by now. Um, I got yeah, it was I got a medium, and it was pretty much that was an entire cup. Yeah. Um, just cream and sugar. It's yeah, just cream and sugar. Um, I'll give it a shot. Yeah, do it. Anything's worth a try once. Yes. You look. You always look like a tool asking for it, though. I'll say that. <laughs> so is this like an actual thing? Like it's like a secret you... menu. Yeah, it's like McDonald's see... secret menu. Really? I'm, sure, I'm sure some Tim Hortons employees have heard of it. Other ones probably haven't. It's just like, huh. Huh. I don't know. Like, I don't think it's something that they tell you in training. Like, oh, somebody asked for a Gretzky. You know what to do. Yeah. Like, <laughs> it's kind of just like an inside joke, I think. Maybe. But, like, I, again, I doubt it's necessarily common amongst. I wouldn't doubt a lot have heard of it, but it's. Yeah. Because they don't know Gretzky's stats. Why is it called a Gretzky? Uh, his number on his jersey was 99. Okay. Oh. I thought it was like he scored nine goals and nine assists in one game or something like that. That would be cool. Well, it would be like 18 goals then. Yeah. Game. That's a retired number. That's it's, his number. Yeah, yeah. they don't let other people take it anymore. That's the, yeah. That's the same with uh, 04. 04 belongs to Bobby Orr. And that's a retired number too, I think. I think. What do you have to do to get a number retired? Or just be great? Uh, yeah. Great, like, it, I don't know too much about Bobby Orr's history. Like, Gretzky was on a level completely that, like, nobody will probably ever touch again. Like, even yeah. McDavid's considered, like, a god. Um, he's not getting close to Mc, uh, Gretzky. To be fair, it's McDavid's yeah. second year. But I'm pretty sure he's not even, like, half of what Gretzky was getting. Okay. Like, his prime year. Like, well, And to be fair, hockey was different as a sport back then, too. Yeah. Um, the idea of having... There was two players that weren't great at hockey that were on the first line with Gretzky, and their entire job was just to protect Gretzky, mm-hmm. to make sure no player would hurt him. Um, so it was... Hockey played a lot different back, and we're now... McDavid's surrounded by other great hockey players as well. Um, so things like that, you know, all the scoring potential is pretty much put on Gretzky every time, where now it's McDavid and Nugent Hawkins and Everly and whoever else. What's the guy that plays for the Penguins that everybody goes on about all the time? Like, I can't remember his name. Crosby? Thank you. Uh, like, would his number get retired? Because he is a great hockey player. He's a or, popular hockey player. No, yeah, he, he is incredible. Football. He's great as well. Yeah. Um, but again, he's nowhere close to what Gretzky accomplished. Yeah, I'm just saying, like, what would it take for his number to get retired? I don't know what number he uh, is. Like, tr- 
triple his overall so like, like, like stats. More than he's at, so uh, I was saying like make all the stats better, have him win several Stanley Cups, and okay. you know, well, hasn't he won a couple cups? And he's played for Canada as well a bunch of times. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he is yeah. Canadian. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. He's played for I, Canada. Again, well, it's pretty much you have to be Canadian to play for Canada. Yeah. It's almost like Michael, like Michael Jordan. Yeah, like Michael. He's Phelps. done a lot. Um, LeBron James is incredible, and I actually think LeBron James is. I'm not familiar enough with basketball to know for sure. I think some of LeBron James numbers are actually rivaling Michael Jordan's. Yeah, I might be wrong on that, but um, that's you. Know, if like nobody's even close to what Gretzky accomplished. Yeah, and that's just the point. And again, it's hockey is now changes the sport where I don't think it's ever going to happen again unless mm-hmm. hockey sees a radical shift in how it plays. Huh. Okay. Um. So therefore, yeah, it's just kind of reserved as his legacy will always. Yeah, yeah. They don't want any other player to touch that legacy. Yeah, fair enough. I just wasn't sure if you could retire another number. If Crosby could retire another number. And again, maybe a player will completely change the game in a different way. I have no idea. Um, So, you know, like, the strategy behind sports and the way it's played does change over time. um, Mm. If you follow it closely enough. I try to think, was the New Jersey Devils in the early 2000s? They're... Maybe not really. Too. There was a team where they, where like the rules of hockey changed because they played in such a boring defensive way that everybody hated playing against and hated watching. But they're like, okay, we're literally going to change the way some of these rules work because nobody likes playing against you. <laughs> wow. Because it was just like that. I can't remember some. I want to say it was the Devils, but I can't remember the name of the strategy or anything. But um, so yeah, things like that. If some player. If a single player was completely able to revolutionize, but not even revolutionize in a defensive way, but in an offensive way, where they're just completely dominant, maybe they would retire a number again. I don't think any player has come through to revolutionize the sport since Gretzky, though. Okay. This has been the most sports-heavy podcast yet. Yeah, I think so. We got something for everyone. Yeah, a little bit of rugby, a little bit of hockey out, a little bit of McDonald's. Mm-hmm. I don't know what's <laughs> next. Speaking of which... You had a McDonald's thing? Oh, I already said mine. All okay, day breakfast. I have a McDonald's thing. Oh, we're going to have four McDonald's stories. Oh yeah. God. After you. I'll go after yours. Have you heard of the Monster Mac? Yes. No. Ew. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what it is? No, I just can tell it's going to be gross. Hey, Aaron, what's the Monster Mac? I have no idea. What, Take like guess. a million patties? I'm going to guess it's ten chicken McNuggets put in like the... Big Mac's buns. It's worse. It, it, you're close. <laughs> Do you want me to look up the actual numbers? Or uh, just describe it. Uh, what's the name of the the Grand Mac? Okay, it's a Grand Mac. I don't know what a Grand Mac. A is Grand. Like. We don't get them here. I don't think, but they're a bigger Big Mac, basically. Okay. Yeah, it's a bigger like Big Mac. A bigger double like Big Mac. Thick, it must be. Thicker we, patties. We have double more patties. Mac. You're talking at the same time. Sorry. It's um. It's just thicker patties, thicker and wider patties. I yeah. Believe. That's all it is. Um, so it's a Grand Mac with two Big Macs inside of it. But inside those Big Macs are two Mini Macs. Little Macs. Little Macs. Macs. Or ju- Junior Macs is what they're called. And in each Junior Mac is a chicken nugget. I don't know what that means. What's so, that's so, so, so weird. So, so, what's a uh, Junior Mac? A Junior Mac is a smaller Big Mac, basically. So it's, it, it's so the same. It's a they cheeseburger? Whole... No, it's still the, same, still the same whatever, three buns, two patties. But it's just instead of being like five inches in diameter, it's only three inches in diameter. Okay. Not that it's that, but you, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. small. And then a Grand Mac is seven inches in diameter. Yeah. Okay. So to recap, it's a Grand Mac with so two Big Macs. So and you it's... open the three buns and you put in a Big Mac in each of the two buns, like each side of it, and you put another one inside of that in like each. Bit. That's not helping. I I, I actually no, no, I do like hand motions. I, I... go ahead, man. I'll, I'll have you try to try and okay. describe it. It's a Grand Mac with two Big Macs inside of it, and inside of each of those Big Macs are two Junior Macs, and inside each of those Junior Macs is a chicken nugget. Does this come with all the buns? Yes. yes. All the buns, all of the vegetables, all the patties. Who could eat that? It's it's about Michael two Jones. feet tall that when is it's gross. done. That is gross. And you have to, like, skewer it and then eat it sideways. Gross. Yeah, so it, it contains a Grand Mac, two Big Macs, four Mac Juniors, and a handful of chicken McNuggets. Yeah. So you say inside the Grand Mac is two Big Macs. Yeah. So you open. Is the, is it inside the Grand Mac is the patties plus two Big Macs? Because if it's just that much bun, that's horrible. See, yeah. the way it works is in all of these Macs there are three buns, right? Yeah. The in the Grand Mac, um, the Big Mac goes in between the top and middle bun, and the Big Mac goes in between the middle and bottom bun. Yeah. 
Yes. And then the same thing for the smaller. That you open so up the big mechanical. Patty hole. still there then? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Every that's buns right. All. All, every uh, portion of each Mac is in there. Yeah. Nothing is removed. That's so weird. It's a monster Mac. I, I will c- give credit for the creators of this. It was Achievement Hunter. Oh, so this isn't a. Oh, that's fine. It's not a super <laughs> menu item, but it probably might be. <laughs> that be, is so How much does that cost? Uh, I what's a Big Mac? Six bucks? I don't know. Oh, it's, it's research. I, I can, but basically, that's a photo of the monster back. Basically, that, that, that's what it comes that's down disgusting. to. Disgusting. Uh, oh, I think they they did. Oh no, they worked out the calories in it. They didn't work out how much it would cost. Anyway, enough Mac talk. It's time for gravy boat. You got something? Uh, I don't. Steven got something. I, uh, I, I, I always had has like if nobody else has one. Go for okay, it, Steven. Yeah, the backup boat. <laughs> the backup boat. Uh, I mean, the well, for which type of rap music do I want to plug today? <laughs> uh, I am going to plug... Okay, I know. Um, there's this rapper from Arizona. This hey. Arizona got brought up earlier. I'll bring it up again. It did? Yeah, Never mind. Just McDonald's thing, the teal oh. purchase. Um, I see. Anyway, so yeah, he's from Arizona. He... This was a few years ago. He released a small snippet of a song he did with Idea, um, the best rapper you've never heard of. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he did a small snippet, and the song was great, so he put out albums and stuff before that. Uh, he's hoping to release his next album this year. Uh, and yeah, he does a solid rap. Tech- I usually hear you refer to as Memphis rap. It's more of like just like a horror style of rap music. Not um, murder rap? Sorry? Not it is not death rap, no. Okay. Um, it's more... Yeah, horror themes is the best way to do it. One of his songs... Uh, is awesome. uh, he has like an 8-bit theme song, so it sounds almost like a Castlevania type song. He has one about Jacob Cal, which was like a, um urban legend of a serial killer in Arizona. Um, he has a bunch of songs, and they're all very good. Uh, I would highly suggest checking him out. Uh, I guess the song I'll plug that we'll put in the Gravy Boat playlist, because it's the only song because I know it's 100% sure is on YouTube, is a song he did called Dream to Nightmare, uh, off his album Evil Imaginations, released in 2011. That's way too much information. <laughs> okay, artist and song name. Valtiel, Dreams to Nightmare. There we go. That will be on our YouTube channel. We have a playlist called Gravy Boat. Uh, you can find the song there if you would like to listen to it, as well as other songs that we've plugged in previous podcasts. So if you're looking for something new, something that you probably haven't heard before, go check that out. And that's... Uh, you, you're looking at something? Uh, I'm calculating out, so that'll be... Sorry, how much does something would cost? Yeah. I'll plug one more McDonald's story. So, uh, at work, I, we were deleting a bunch of old domains and stuff that we didn't need anymore. We apparently at one point owned one where it was McDonald's dot our website dot com. Yeah. <laughs> and it was just like, what is the point? Like, we don't use this. Where is it? Apparently, if you typed it in, uh, we you'd be taken to a weapons yeah. website that like sells guns and oh, stuff. Wow. <laughs> so, oh, wow. Which is completely unrelated to the work I do. That's <laughs> so, hilarious. Monster Mac would cost, what, 30 bucks? That's not That's bad. That's it? Yeah. Well, think about it. Big Mac's like six bucks. Big Mac's those four. Are... Big Mac's four. U.S. or Canadian? Oh, I don't know. Probably yeah, U.S. Probably U.S., yeah. But then that, whatever one, big one, one, one grand Mac, Mac that yeah. probably wouldn't be that much more. No. The Mini Macs aren't that much. And then Mini chicken nuggets, I guess you get like a children's meal of chicken yeah. nuggets and there's your four. Yep. Well, have you guys seen that video of that guy? Like after those self-serve screens came out, he went and got like the most expensive burger you could possibly get. It was like over 200 bucks. Really? What? Mm-hmm. How, what, did they put he, gold on it? He got like everything on it to like the fullest extent that you could to like 10 patties in between like everything i don't know it was weird do you see the girl come through the window at the mcdonald's drive through no oh my god i showed <laughs> yeah, you yeah, that I know, right too. yeah the I, I freaking was. chicken nuggets um, psycho there's some lady she like pulled it to the drive through of mcdonald's and she's like trying to get the chicken nuggets and like oh we don't sell those at like 10 o'clock in the morning and she's like yeah you do i mean you sold it to me before and they're like no we don't She's like, yeah, you do. And she starts, like, coming out her car window. Oh, trying yes. to, like, this beat up the lady. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Beat up the lady that's, like, 
doing the drive through and the lady's trying to shut the door and she like opens up and gets out of the car and starts like smashing the window and eventually smashes it and there's like a big black guy trying to fend her off and call the cops like yeah that's and intense. she said she was gonna go super scion on their ass <laughs> super scion yeah I like the car uh, <laughs> then she gets back in her car and drives off that's crazy yeah all for treating my nuggets yeah my favorite part of that whole video is when the car behind them just like pulls up, pulls up like nothing happened they're just like I'm hey, here I'm ready to get my food huh. yeah Wow. That, that's pretty intense. Well, unless you guys have any last thoughts. Uh, you know this Nokia brick phone? Yes. Like, like the really indestructible one? Yeah? You know yeah. what I'm talking about? Yeah. Uh, the one that's supposed to be able to like survive a nuclear drop. Almost, oh, and so like, this isn't a new brick. thing. This is like the old phone. Yeah, the, the, old, the old phone. Oh, is, like, okay. It's a meme. Yeah. <laughs> uh, how indestructible these things are. Nokia is bringing it back and selling them again. Oh, wow. Because of how indestructible they are. And how freaking, how much attention is on there? Oh, yeah. Wow. Much. And how robust they can be. That is interesting. Yeah. I will not get one. No, no, you yeah. <laughs> You know, everybody's going all touch screen and everything. Yeah. All right, well, that's, uh, let's wrap up the show here. Yeah. Um, final plugs for our own stuff. Follow us on all our social media stuff. We have a Twitter, we have a YouTube channel, which we've already mentioned, We where you can find all of our podcasts for free. But, uh... <laughs> <laughs> More what? importantly, uh, we really need to test the capabilities of our stat tracking. So go download on iTunes and your favorite podcasting <laughs> app and uh, and just drop comments and ratings and stuff and just let us know what you love or hate about e- any of our episodes. And uh, yeah. Email us as well. Email us at uh, hasslecast at gmail.com. You got it right. I did. I, I got it now. I had to do it by myself last week, Alex. I know. I'm, you did good. That spelled... Uh, I'm assuming you didn't listen to last week's episode, did you, Aaron? No. Ben could not figure out if it was .ca or .com. Oh, no. Yeah, I got Gmail it. is always .com. Yeah. I got on. it. I got well, it. Well, like, give your head a shake. I, I had a Gmail account that was like .ca, and I, like, I had iTunes hooked up to it that had like 40 bucks on there, but I don't have access to the account because oh. it's .ca, not .com. It's a, it's a whole thing. It's Anyways, cool it's, a, it's a pain in the ass. It's, I tried getting it, like, the money back and change over. Not worth it. Yeah. Um, so, I've noticed that to find us on a lot of the uh, podcasting apps and stuff, you have to spell it a particular way. Um, and capitals count. So, it's, at least for, for my app, it does. But the, what I had to search to find us was capital H, A-S-T-L-E, capital C, A-S-T. Just search that, look for the big red logo, you should find it. And then definitely subscribe to that so that you don't miss the next episode. But yeah, uh, thank you very much for joining tonight, guys. Yeah, thank good. you. My pleasure. See you later. Monster Max out. Boy, wait. Wait.